bro. I just work, gym, come home, and I stream in front of you guys. Play Lost Ark like a true DJ. Talk to women? No. Lost Ark raids, baby. That's all I got time for, baby. Yeah, let's do a read. A read along, shall we, chat? Of the roadmap? 2024 roadmap part three. <laughs> what makes a juice road? Oh, juice. Uh juice roadmap when it does more than just the uh the normal here's our of arcasia we are excited to share the third part of the 2024 roadmap which includes some major plan content pieces arrived in, arriving in arcasia over the next four months of 2024 john join associate franchise leader matthew hudson huston Head of editorial Henry Stelter and community manager Roxanne Sabo for our team's video update. Okay, there's a video right here. Uh, I'm not gonna watch the video. I think it's like a 30 minute video. I'm not gonna watch the whole thing. We're just gonna read through it. Uh, Indigo Island. Indigo Island is located off the uh, coast from Curzan Continent, located in the Sea of Guinea. It has incredibly beautiful underwater scenery and will open up for players at item level 1600 to explore. Indigo Island will include quests <coughs> that can be completed to access a single player underwater cave dungeon, which contains three paths, paths, paths that you'll be able to explore. Reward tokens from this dungeon will be exchanged for progression material like elixirs and more. So you're definitely going into one to venture into Indigo Island. I think this is really interesting as far as events go. Um, I really liked the world boss event that we had like um, a couple weeks ago now at this point because it really brought the world together but this is fine too um, the issue I have with events is that they're timed so like I am never like whenever I'm on Lost Ark I'm always fucking busy like I'm doing raids I'm doing daily daily dailies and shit I don't got time to wait until the event starts to do the event to get the tokens from what I understand from this is that you can just go into this dungeon by yourself and just complete it for the day and then you're done or maybe for the week I don't know how many times you're supposed to do it but you can just do it on your own you don't have to fucking wait for like a time for it to open up I could be wrong though uh, Marahaka Festival continue with a new quest unlocked in August to help carry on the summer celebrations. Style book. Okay, so this is like whatever, but it's kind of cool that they're adding some kind of like style book. Uh, Black Desert Online has something like this where you can, when you're like customizing your character or whatever, you can actually pick other people's customization, I think. Um,. Uh, or you can see what other how other people customize their characters, and then you can just like use that to customize your character. I think it's it's, it's a cool idea for people who are like, you know, into that stuff. I guess. Bound Gold System. Oh, the Bound Gold System will be introduced to the Western version of Lost Ark. This will allow players to earn additional gold from in-game activities to use in progression systems. It's important to note that we are still working out the details, blah, 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 earnable, like the amount and stuff like that. This is huge, guys, right here. This is amazing. So I think uh, a lot of people, especially a lot of newer players uh, who only want to do like uh, solo raids and stuff like that, they're having a hard time getting gold and um, because solo raids don't really give that much gold. And uh, I think this is a great uh, solution to that problem to have additional ways to either. I don't know how they're going to implement this, but it seems like to me there's going to be additional ways to get gold from besides just raids, but the gold will be bound so they can't trade it, but they can use it to hone, uh, you know, cut their elixirs. Uh, use it for the, their character essentially or their roster, but they can't trade it to anybody else. So that will help combat bots uh, a little bit. I mean, I, it's not a all all in all solution, but uh, I think it is a great uh, way to for like, cause like I want other shit to do besides raids guys. Like, and I think this is a, a, a good, a good uh, addition to the system. Can I have your gold since you're getting bound gold? <laughs> yeah, they're gonna make you do horizontal for gold if you have time. I mean, like, listen, if I have time to do it, I'll do it, but 
It kind of depends. Um, Echidna Raid Adjustment. Uh, due to the quick pace of content release here in the West, the normal hard difficulty of Echidna will be reduced in August. We hope this allows for more players to clear the content and continue progressing without fatigue. I have been fucking saying that this raid, Echidna, especially off of Thaymine's release, is too hard for casual players. And nobody, nobody fucking was on my side about this. Um, dude, guys, I've been saying Echidna raid a little bit too hard. Well, they mind. Okay, so here's the thing. I think that one, yes, like releasing Echidna like literally in such a short. I know why they did it, right? Because they wanted to get people to be able to advance home faster get to uh you know so they can speed up the release cycle to make it more in sync with korea i get the idea but it definitely was very fucking tiring after get coming off of just like actually figuring out how to do thamine gate one through three effectively having to fucking learn another raid uh i don't know if it's because raids are hard at this point let's like here is my thing guys i love right right i love rating like in this game right but it needs to uh, the game needs to appeal to more cat it needs to appeal for more casual players otherwise it's just gonna fucking die it's been dying like honestly but like if you ever with the release of solar raids you gotta like you know keep making it more keep making it more um friendly for casual players we have a normal mode and we have a hard mode of each raid hard mode can be the sweaty version right hard mode is where all the veterans all the sweat lords can play and then normal can just be a casual fr friendly raid you know what i'm saying because they seen souls jailed hey i'm not the only one getting jailed out here guys look all right uh september new continent north kurzan it's time to continue your story in arcasia and head north to explore the next part of kurzan's continent i haven't even done the newest part of the story yet uh the demon legion and chaos gardens have taken over a revival castro seems to be imminent follow your feet in south kurzan el need asar's land hat ass Ars land have been liberated and the ally flares have begun to gather in north cars and the Antares volcano is turbulent and both tensions and heat is rising it's time to prepare, prepare yourself for the final battle of your destiny north cars and is gonna have it's like i think it's gonna probably be the pre-quest for like behemoth and there's a new adventures tome that i'll never fucking do uh world boss i'll probably do if there's an omnium star achievements and more okay tier four will bring in a mountain of new content and systems to lost ark and will be the biggest end game update and overhaul to the date in the western version of lost ark there's an enormous amount of nuance and specifics of the systems and how they unfold in the rollback we will uncover some of the highlights but no need to worry leading up to tiers four's release in september we will feature deep dives in the systems so the players feel up to speed and ready to hit the ground when tier four reach arcasia's western shores okay uh just a quick summary it looks like we'll be able to enter tier four you know north kurzan and unlock the kurzan front line and kenuart fortress kurzan front is a new type of hack and slash content similar to chaos dungeon instead it consumes 100 r resonance so you'll need to enter once a day two dungeons will be added at item level 1640 and 1660 all right all right kenuart fortress is a new dungeon that can uh, you can challenge alone or a four player party. It requires item level 1620 and can be entered up to three times per day. Counterout Fortress lets you earn tier four relic equipment, ensuring a smooth transition. The first time you defeat a boss in Counterout Fortress, each day you're guaranteed to get a tier four gear selection chest. Additional ones can be earned as drops. Honestly, if this becomes like a daily sort of thing, nobody's gonna do this in a group. Maybe like the first week. Uh, but once it becomes like soluble no one's gonna it's gonna be like because remember when uh uh lost ark first release people actually partied up for chaos dungeons i remember i remember uh tier four accessories and graves and ability stones will work a diff bit differently than tier three but players can toggle between the systems freely 
Uh, accessories no longer provide engraving nodes, and instead offer stat increases, arc, passive, and enlightenment points. There will be new polishing systems for upgrading accessories, and accessories can be traded before, during, or after being upgraded through the polishing system. In tier four, trading accessories kind of cool. Uh, in tier four, you can equip five combat engravings and level them up with the engra engraving recipes, which now, instead of enhancing nodes of the engraving, directly impact the value of the engraving. Uh, it's a lot of yapping here. Um, ability stone nodes will enhance the effects of the engraving rather than providing nodes. Sort of the engraving tier stones can be transferred to tier four. In tier four, key stats like crit, swift, and, uh, and spec, gear set effects, class engravings, and more will be added into the new system called the arc passive. Arc passive is a new way to approach building your character. It comes with three key tabs. The basic stats are in evolution tab, class specialization, uh, enlightenment tab, and awakening skills ascension tab. Evolution, enlightenment, and ascension. Uh, these can be upgraded by connecting the nodes in the UI that resembles the skill tree. The first two tabs will be releasing in tier four in September, and the ascension tab will be uh, released alongside hyper awakening, which we'll cover in later in the roadmap. How, dude, are you guys excited for Hyper Awakening? Like, it's cool looking, but I'm just like, I'd rather have gotten a new job class or something. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, I mean, I it's cool looking. I'll, I'll give it that. But it's just like, it's just like, a, eh, this is another thing. Um... Uh, level cap from 60 to 70, roster level cap from 300 to 400, uh, tier 4 gems will be also added, um, tier 3 gems can be converted into tier 4, tier 4 will also feature new ebony cube, a uh, new guardian raid, and more. There are a ton more nuances, yeah, 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 I actually have done zero research in tier 4, uh, I'm more of a, when it comes, I'll figure it out. Uh, the 16 player raid uh, against Behem Behemoth will release granted tier 4 materials and weapon transcendence to victorious players with a limited pool of revives available prepare for mayhem as your group work together to fill the enormous dragon and raid requiring item level 64. I heard this raid is pretty easy. Uh, like I think Korea cleared it in like an hour going in blind so or something like that. Uh, I could be wrong. That's what I heard though. And so I think uh, we'll be okay. It'll be it'll be a nice little raid. Um, we are express servers. Okay. You know everything about tier four. You can just ask me. All right. It's easy because everyone's 40 set and 10 gems. Oh, true. I didn't think of that. I didn't think of that. Yeah, Korea's kind of juiced, right? Uh, all right, guys. I heard about this, but now we're going to read the details. We are planning to include an evolution of jumpstart servers. They're bringing back jumpstart servers, but with a twist. Express servers are a special limited wa time world that will allow players to progress quickly with various progression and material boost with new upgrades. It's kind of like seasons, guys. This this kind of feels like seasons. It's giving it's giving seasons. Like you guys play Black BDO, they have seasonal characters that they give you like hella mats and rewards and like equipment and free shit to play that character in the season and then once the season's over uh our goal uh let's see if they implement this our goal for these servers to help prepare a new or significantly last uh new or significantly last to item level 1620 ready to enter tier 4 and join the fight against Kazros. we will detail the benefits leading up to our launch in september Oh, it's releasing in September. Okay, that's pretty soon. But wanting to provide a few differences for players who are familiar with Jumpstart servers, comparing them side by side. We will include significant vertical progression boosts alongside in-game events. Jumpstart servers previously did not have horizontal progression boosts at the time, but with the introduction of Arcasia Tour, players will be able to progress horizontally, horizontally in the Express Worlds at a much faster pace. That's good. We are looking into server transfer. Like, this is big news. We are looking into server transfers, which Jumpstart servers previously did not have. This will allow users to move off onto another world once the limited world has come to an end. We're digging into the logistics on this and plan to share updates in the future. That is a W right there. That is great for, uh, honestly, that's great news all around, but it's especially great for veteran players. That's a free 1620 character, guys, that once you're done playing through the season, 
the jumpstart server you can now transfer that character onto your original roster if 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 what i'm hearing here is correct what i'm reading here is correct right that is amazing that's a w right there that is uh yeah so basically like last time they did jumpstart servers i played it for like a week and then i was just like this is dumb because like i was like i don't want to start all fucking over you know like but this is this is gives me this gives me motivation to actually try the jumpstart server you know play uh essentially it's it feels like a seasonal character right it feels like a season like and like we all we all know like bdo has seasons diablo 4 has seasons diablo 3 had seasons right you fucking even diablo 2 had seasons i'm pretty sure and you know seasons are extremely popular feature in those games i think they're a great system and now that lost ark is getting our version of seasons it seems like i think this is like a really good direction of the game because like not only can i you know try out a new character get a juice character or whatever and then you know maybe make some new friends you know st essentially start from like ground zero with other people but i know at the end of it i can just move that character onto my original roster and have that character on my roster i think that's that's uh, that's awesome seasons are pretty popular except winter <laughs> winter season that season sucks I'm just kidding. That's when I was born. It's pretty cool. Oh, uh, actually, I, I take that back. I love snowboarding. So, yeah, I love the winter season. It's probably my favorite season. Uh, we're also excited to share winter. You know what's ironic about the winter season? That is the most time I actually go touch grass. Is that a joke? Yeah, you caught it. winter season where everyone's staying in all cold and shit is actually the season where i actually go out the most because i go snowboarding a lot in the winter season <laughs> which is kind of ironic but what well, anyways that's that's besides the point uh like it's summertime right now and i have not been out i haven't gone out drinking once i haven't bro i just work gym come home and i stream in front of you guys play lost ark like a true dj talk to women no lost ark raids baby that's all i got time for baby all right uh yaz's jar season three we're also excited to share that yaz's jar season three will be released in september we know that players have been clamoring for the these skins mixed feelings about the skins. some are pretty cool there's a couple of them that are pretty cool most of them are pretty mid um, I like the soul fist one, so hopefully I can get the soul fist one under booba for the win. All right. Uh, these are Yaz's jars, legendary skin. I'm going to go quickly through them because we looked at them yesterday. So I don't want to take, I want to, I want to like do this again, but here are my thoughts on each skin mid mid dope, fucking dope, dope, mid striker mid 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 under booba for the win mid hunter this is dead eye by the way mid pretty cool got you know like teen titan cyborg type vibe fucking dope sharpshooter by the way uh it's kind of mid because we have a lot of skins that look like this already uh i like the left one i don't like the right one all right bard mid this is kind of cool. This is probably the best one of the magicians. Mid. Mid as fuck. Okay, assassin. Pretty cool. I think this is the best one out of the, all the assassins. Mid. Mid. Really mid. Okay, specialist. I actually like this one. I like the artist. Both the artist and the aromancer legendary skins are actually pretty cool. I am not going to lie. They're pretty cool. Like I don't really play I pl I have both characters. I don't play them a lot consistently, but you know, they're pretty cool. Like this green one's kind of fire. All right. October, a gear raid. A gear will be the next Kazros raid that players will take on. This two gate Kazros raid will require 
uh, players to face off against Danger Smith with a con, a con returning to the, uh, for a fight in the first gate. And a, do we? Okay, so does anyone know? It, uh, don't actually don't spoil it for me. But does it? But I want to know if we're fighting a con again. Do we actually kill him this time? Because this motherfucker won't fucking die. Um, I went through fucking three gates and a hidden gate to kill this motherfucker. Uh, and now I have to fight him again. The gear raid will have tier four ancient gear, which can be honed further than relic to help activate the arc passive system. They mind the first removal. Well, this isn't. Well, this isn't content. We want to remind players that when October update hits, they mind the first removal will be removed. So if you want to clear the challenge to earn the rewards, rewards, be sure to take this on before it disappears. Serious question, guys. Who wants to do they mind the first? Um. Now, if you really are wanting to do they mind the first, just know that you probably won't. We probably won't be getting our weekly raids done just fyi like if you guys are serious about doing they mind the first that's probably gonna be at least like three hour prog every day not every day but like you won't you won't get your gold earning rates done if you guys actually want to try to get this november hyper awakening dude actually this picture is pretty cool uh now that uh hyper awakening will be added uh is this uh is this war dancer or is this crapper i can't remember no, this is Scrapper, I'm pretty sure. Uh, the impact will be between basic skill and awakening in terms of balance. The skills can be acquired as rewards after clearing quests and be strengthened by cer fulfilling certain conditions. This will also include the final tab of the arc passive system. This comes in November. Buzzling Island will be a fun new island to explore. This honeybee themed island will have new adventures and quests for you to take on. I'll probably never go there. This is what I've been saying. Lost Ark. Ow, oh, Smilegate. If you want me to explore your world, I want to explore it. But please, 18 grades is too much. Give us 12 raids, two raids per character, and then front load the gold. Front load the gold. Give us more gold per raid, and then I will, I will gladly go explore this island. Buzzling Island, but other than that, 18 raids and uh, amongst the other shit, dailies and stuff like that, I'll probably never go here. I'll never, I'll probably never go here, guys. Uh, new pet abilities. Oh, wait, this is the first I'm hearing about hearing about new pet abilities. New pet abilities will be added to the game. All pets will have these abilities randomly granted, which will assist you in areas of games such as stronghold, farm, dispatches, crafting. We'll have to, you'll have to send your pet to the crime war watch in your stronghold in order to use these abilities. And of course, you'll be able to you reroll them by sending your pets to training. Our team is ex oh okay, that's interesting. That's a cool little feature, I guess. Uh. Stay tuned to our website, social channels. Give us, give us an option to pet our pets. Give us an animation option to pet our pets. Please. It's gotta be possible. We have emotes for everything else. Give us an emote to where we can pet our pet. Anyways, chat, that is the whole, whole roadmap. I am really looking forward to these express servers, right? I think this is the best part of this whole world map is this express server. Like I'm really excited for our own implementation of seasons. This is really cool. Besides that, yeah, this is, I mean, this is a pretty good roadmap guys. Uh, express server is definitely carrying it for me though.